You're listening to the Yes, I'm Still Sober podcast with your host. With 20 plus years of experience in stand up comedy and controlled substances, John Rabin. Yeah. New year, new intro, you guys. Welcome to the Yes, I'm Still Sober podcast. I'm John Rabin. And uh, that is uh, that song's uh, old, by Only Child Tyrant, aka Amon Tobin, and uh, I'm just uh, a fan of uh, basically everything that he does, Amon Tobin. So uh, that's the new intro music. And um, and if for those of you who hate change and you don't like that, it's going to be all right. You'll get used to it, or you won't, and you'll stop listening. Either way, hello, 2020. New Year. I am happy to be back. We, uh, my girl and I, were in New York City, as uh, I mentioned last week. New York City for uh, Tuesday through Saturday morning. And uh, so we were there for New Year's on uh, Times Square, technically. Like we were actually in a hotel on Times Square um, that had a New Year's Eve party on the roof or at least in their club on the roof it wasn't there was an area we were out outside uh and you know when the ball dropped and everything and could see just a massive amount of crowds and uh people who were standing out there all day waiting for the ball to drop wearing diapers more than likely uh to, which is gross uh we were quite fine it uh you know, I handled it pretty well. All the drunk dipshits, uh, tourists, and everybody that were there from all over the world, uh, and you know, was able to, uh, uh, you know, I kissed my girlfriend uh, on uh, at midnight, and then about twenty minutes. I think it lasted about twenty minutes after that. So around twelve twenty, I was like, "Hey, I love you. I'm gonna go to the room," and that was fine. Because I'm not uh, drinking. So, you know, and uh, friends of ours were there. So they continued and, uh, you know, actually took it fairly easy, easily. They, you know, they didn't go overboard or anything. Um, and uh, one thing that we did learn is there's a reason people don't fly into New York on New Year's Eve. The reason you don't fly to party that night because you're just it you know next time it's like maybe we fly in the day before an event and then recuperate maybe that maybe rest so it was a lot of fun though it was a kind of a it was a like stand up comedy centric trip like we went and saw shows and then uh my girlfriend who's also a comedian uh went and uh did an open mic there and you know it was it was a lot of fun we saw the um probably the best comedy show i've ever seen at the comedy cellar on january 1st so it was actually technically january 2nd because it was 12 15 a.m uh so it's like the diehard uh fans um because pretty much everybody else was uh tending to their hangover wounds but uh but we went and saw it you know and uh saw uh, my favorite comic, Dave Attell, was on there um, working on some material. And then uh, but everybody just killed it. It was it was good for me because I haven't seen a show outside of Austin in years. So it was good to have some kind of perspective to be in the because you can watch specials. You can watch different. You can watch stand up on TV, but it's nothing like being there. And, you know, the the ambience and the uh, you know, the vibe of the crowd, which is always why it's it's, you know, whenever you see it, whenever like audio is leaked or a YouTube video of, uh, you know, this comedian said this, oh, my God, kind of a thing. It's like it's it's not it doesn't do it justice because you weren't there about what happened. You know, you weren't in the moment at the show from that perspective. So it's kind of weird that even, even with audio and video, 
it's not the same as being there. But uh, the show is just killer, and it just it uh, reinvigorated me about uh, being about uh, I don't know being professional, I guess, or just you know that you have a job to do, you know, to make people laugh, and uh, it does not matter what kind of the show, because there's there's a kind of a level of uh, I wouldn't call it apathy, but uh, it's just a it's kind of a, a lack of motivation drive. Uh, it feels like when you see uh, some comedians here on stage, it's just kind of this, uh, you know, hey, whatever, man, kind of a kind of a thing, you know, where it's not it's it's not po- as polished. It doesn't seem like, you know, whether they're putting forth an effort or not, it doesn't f- come across that way. So it was kind of a it was it really. Yeah, it it jump started me. And keeping in, in my head that, you know, what what I've got to do when I'm on stage, how I've got to really bring it regardless of who else is on the show, regardless of what kind of show it is. Are we in a brewery, which is like performing in a warehouse, which has the acoustics of a high school gym during a pep rally? Yeah, maybe so. But uh, you got to bring it because uh, these people did not pay any money to see it. But m- maybe they did, but it doesn't matter. It's still a show. <laughs> you know? you know, hopefully there's it's a show that, that charges a cover, but usually it's not. It doesn't matter. Everybody wants stuff for free. But, uh, but you're an artist. This is your art. You need to take it seriously. So that was good. It was good for me. So overall, though, because I had been in New York before, but I don't remember it much did a lot of drinking. I was only in a, uh, a small section of it. I didn't branch out. I didn't see shit. So it was, um, so this, this felt like a, uh, more of a first time. And it was funny because as, as we were coming in on the train, it was like looking around. I was like, eh. So it's a city. I've seen cities. I've been to Chicago, kind of a thing. But, uh, but you know, once you're in there and you're around it, and uh, you know, I had this weird feeling of uh, after about half a day, I'm like, all right, I get it. Yeah, I get you, New York. But uh, no, so I, I had to wait. You know, I, I rushed to judgment. I waited for the after the whole trip, and um, and this is uh, my review of New York. Is this? Um, for, you know, I give New York five stars for its indifference, man. So good. The indifference that people, you know, this, the people do not give a fuck and they're doing their own shit. I'm so about that. Uh, you guys are great in that aspect about just, you know, I'm watching out for me very much, uh, very much. So five stars. However, I give two stars for your lack of personal space. Needs improvement because people really just like to. It's because there's so many people, so I guess they get so used to it. But it's like really just like, man, do you have to sit so close? Just stand or something. Don't sit so close to me on the subway. I don't know. It's uh, or one of the one of the comedy clubs we went to Gotham, and they have to they sit you with other people. It's fucking weird. Because there's not that, I, and I get it. Because there's not that much space. Not everybody gets to have their own table. But you know, it was it it was just weird because it's like the uh, they they sat us down at this one table, and then um, my girlfriend went went to the bathroom. So it was just me sitting there, and then they sat the other couple, the first couple that was that that was there, and it was this very very Italian dude, very like, like cartoon Guido type of guy. And I was like, holy shit, this is not just in the movies kind of a guy. And he was all like, uh, he was like, I don't know where I'm, am I going to sit here? Do I sit over there? And he's pointing at this other chair that where, where my girlfriend was sitting. I'm like, uh, no, my, my girl's sitting there. She's, she'll be back. And he goes, Oh, I thought you were alone. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was, they were there for a little bit. And then he just kind of, he went over to talk to the manager so that he could uh, get his own. He, they wanted to get a different table. Like he wanted to get the table just for them or a table in the back where 
all the two seaters were like in a row so that you weren't so you weren't technically sitting right next to somebody so he went and did that but he, he like told me he goes hey no offense it's not about you but uh i kind of you know and i get it no i get it man i totally get it but he's like hey no offense you alone it was uh it was amazing it's a it's amazing it's the same kind of a amazing thing that uh the, the same kind of feeling I got when uh, when we were in Chicago and uh, and, and uh, uh, there was a, and a family was was about to fly out and and the dad told the told his kid it was like get your backpack and I was so fucking happy about that shit I was like yes it's the accent bro like I was like you know <laughs> it was like a, a you know area bingo type of a thing for me it was like a, yeah stereotype bingo that's what it was so so yeah that was uh, that was great um also big surprise to both me and my girlfriend i love the new york subway i just you know she she thought that i thought this was going to be your least favorite part of new york but turns out i fucking love the subway i was in here going man this is great this thing is amazing. They should have this in every city. Like I was just floored by it. And it just, you know, bam, bam, bam. I'm like, man, why the fuck does anybody drive in this city? And I still wonder that. Why? But, uh, you know, because it's just stuck in traffic. Just taxis and Ubers stuck in traffic and buses. You know, it's it's a strange thing. And also they have, they have cops directing traffic you know, at an intersection where the lights work. How crazy, I don't, it's like, do people really disregard, does New, does New York not give a shit about the rules so much that they have to put cops to go, no, for real though, it's red, for real. Hang on, it's red. No, but seriously, <laughs> but seriously, go. Green is go, guys. Like, Get the fuck out of here. It's go it's green. Like I don't know why they were there, but they were they were cops directing traffic in intersections. Is uh it's amazing. Uh, we had a lot of great food. We spent a lot of goddamn money. But you know. Hey, it's New York City, man. One thing though is we did not experience any run-ins with uh, crazies. Not on the subway, not on the street. I'm sli- I was slightly disappointed. Like, I'm not going to say, like, no, oh, I wish I would have gotten in an altercation. But, uh, no, the only, the only thing was, the only thing that, that happened was there was a, a, a drunk, I think, pregnant lady. We were pretty sure she's pregnant, but she's drunk and British. Uh, who like like white trash British, um, and <laughs> and she was wearing like these Doc Martens with really high um, sole, really thick soles, and she was standing on the she was swaying on a table. She got up on a table that was right next to the ledge because we were outside, and she was all like, and it was the table was wet because she'd kicked over all the drinks on the table. That she got up for the countdown and she was like trying to reach for people to grab onto them because she she uh, loved everybody and we were all and I was like get the fuck away from me, so I spent that's what I did um, the first moment of the new year was I was yelling at a stranger, so which is appropriate like surprise should surprise no one anyone that knows me they're like oh you started the new year off yelling at a stranger that seems right that's on brand. Um, but outside of that, but that's the thing is that we didn't have any kind of run-ins with, uh, you know, fucked up people or, uh, really rude people. Like my girlfriend was like, man, New York city's on its best behavior this week. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but it was great. It was really good. Um, speaking of best behavior, I've, uh, we have a cat. We have a, we have a second cat now. Um, the cat that was in uh, my girlfriend's family and then and we have it now so now we have two cats and a dog in a one bedroom a large one bedroom but a one bedroom apartment and um q-tip is his name he's a big black cat he's like a little he's like a miniature panther or an oversized cat 
He's a scary looking alpha male cat who's actually quite sweet and gentle, except that he and Sid, my cat, do not get along. Or actually, she doesn't like him. She doesn't like the dog either, but she doesn't like him. And um, so that's been that's been kind of interesting, kind of seeing the dynamic, because he likes to play. He likes to try to play with her or mess with her, because she just hisses at him. So he's constantly taunting her to make her hiss at him, and then he kind of runs away, um, pleased with himself. It's it's very it's very strange. However, they're both. I mean, I'm recording in the bedroom because my girlfriend's working in her office out, you know, near the living room. So it's Lucas, the dog is asleep on his bed. And then both the cats are sleeping on the or just lounging on our bed, like within two feet from each other. And this is not something they normally do. But I think it's one of those things that um, Sid, the cat, I think she's thinking, you know, I don't like him at all. However, I like this bed. My love for this bed and being comfortable supersedes my disdain for that fucking asshole cat over there. Like, it's really weird. It's really strange. But they're both just chilling. And it's, uh, so, you know, two cats and a dog. We bought a zoo. That's what's going on here. It's weird because it's like, uh, because they're always checking out, like all three of them are checking out. At any given time, they're checking out positions of the other two. And they're all like eyeing each other and sizing each other up all in the apartment. So it's basically the standoff at the end of the good, the bad, and the ugly at all times in this apartment. Like the whole time. It's that. It's just, uh, they're just eyeballing each other back and forth just the whole fucking time. So this is what it's like. This is, this is who we are now, I guess. <laughs> so this happened uh, today. There was a, um, I was running errands and there was a, a contractor at the apartment complex. I don't know what he was doing, but uh, some... Older dude with a beard, just doing something electrical, I'm guessing. And he kind of looked at me, and then then he was he was approaching me as I was uh, was about to leave. And he goes, "Hey, do do you do comedy, or did you do comedy?" And I was like, "Yeah." I'm thinking, "Oh, he remembers me from." Some hilarious joke I wrote. But no, this is what he said. He goes, yeah, so I used to work at the Ritz um, back in the day. And you, you guys used to do a comedy show there. And you uh, used you and uh, this this other comic and, and people used to uh, used to party at my house with. Uh, and that's. And that's crazy that he remembers me because he's talking about 1997. Somehow he recognizes, I guess because some people are better with faces like for a long period of time because he recognizes me from what I looked like when I was 20 fucking four. And yeah, that's just, that's crazy to me. He remembers, he just remembered that. And I was like, yeah. And I pretended I remembered all that. And I sure as shit don't. But I do remember when we used to do, I mean, we did, I remember doing a comedy show at uh, the Ritz Lounge, which is now, um, it's now an Alamo Draft House in downtown Austin. But uh, it used to be called the Ritz. And then the upstairs was the Ritz Lounge. And that's where we would do comedy. But uh, we used to uh, get wasted all the time there. And so, um, possibly why I don't remember um, that and just time but also the booze but uh, yeah that's crazy I've never That's it's amazing to me that he can remember 22 years ago like anything I there's no way I could remember any face from 22 years ago like I can if I ran into anybody I met and haven't seen in that long I don't know if I could do that 
uh, which brings up uh, something I was thinking about because uh, a lot of people have been doing uh, decades in review, you know, the decade in review, 2010 to 2019 or whatever. And um, so I'd like to do a quick, uh, a quick review of my decade from 2010 to 2019. And here is my review. Um, I don't remember. Thank you. That's it. That's that's all I've got. I don't remember. It's not true. I do remember some things, but there's a man. There's a fucking ton. I don't. I can review. Um, in related to the theme of this podcast, I can I can give you a little bit on that. Um, and that is that 2010 was my <clears throat> the year that is my my low in heroin addiction to the uh, la, you know to ODing at the beginning of 2011 and going to rehab then living in San Antonio for a couple of years then um, you know quitting heroin but started but but went back to drinking because what else are you going to do in San Antonio I told myself so and then, um, you know, then going into, uh, you know, then getting arrested for public intoxication at my 20 year high school reunion, hell of a reunion, and then um, getting my probation revoked because of that. So then going into um, Travis County custody uh, on September 12th, 2012. Staying in there for six months, going through the SMART program, the, uh, you know, rehab light. And, um, you know, making the decision to uh, be sober right for doing that. And then um, so then being in custody for six months, getting out, starting completely over yet again. Um, working part time as a dishwasher in Austin uh, for Contigo, then going to full time, uh, living in a sober house, trying to figure things out. And then uh, slowly improving every year, month by day by day, month by month, year by year, getting better, becoming more of an adult, <laughs> you know, um, becoming more and more responsible, getting getting more stable, um, you know, getting a relationship, being able to talk to people better. Uh, being able to socialize better, starting comedy again, getting better at comedy uh, as a sober uh, person, um, getting a bed for an adult, <laughs> that, <laughs> that uh, uh, getting, um, a, you know, j just last year getting a scooter so that I'm not riding the bus and a skateboard, um, you know, and just gradually more and more and more to where I am now. And that's that's the thing is that there's, um, sometimes I feel like my memory is shot, like I don't remember shit, but uh, it's not about, it's more about who I am now because of the past and less about everything that I can remember. Like I can't remember all the details and all that, but that's not important. What's important is, is present moment, you know, what I'm doing now, what I'm, what I plan on doing, you know, living in the moment, you know, reflecting back a little bit trying but but more of a remembering what worked and what didn't you know that shapes who I am now moving forward that's kind of when I when I reflect on the decade it's more of a you know this happened and I regret none of it what do we have in store for me today kind of a deal and uh and I enjoy that that's just the that's just the way that I uh the way that I currently, who I am today, this is this is how I look at it moving forward. But so we'll see what this year, what this decade has in store. I don't know. More importantly, we'll see what the rest of the day has in store for me. So, um, I guess I better get to it. Thank you guys for uh, for joining me. Um, this has been yes, I'm still sober. Um, episode eighty. I forgot to say that at the top of the show, but this is episode 80 on January 8th, 2020. And thank you guys for joining me. If you have any uh, 
Anything you want to uh, email me about, still soberpod at gmail.com. We will see you next week. Later. Right.